As the Parliament of Earl ran down the hill, they ran into the dusk of evening. Greyly it lay in the valley above the mist from the stream, but with more than the mystery of dusk the air was heavy. Lights blinking early from houses showed that all the folk were home, and the street was deserted by everything that was human. Save when with hushed air and almost furtive step they saw their Lord Orion like a tall shadow go by, with Willow the Wisps behind him, towards the house of the trolls, thinking no earthly thoughts. And the strangeness that had been growing day by day made all the village eerie. So that with short and troubled breath the twelve old men hurried on. And so they came to the holy place of the Freer, which lay on the side of the village that was towards the witch's hill. And it was the hour at which he was wont to celebrate after birdsong, as they named the singing that they sang in the holy place, when all the birds were home. But the Freer was not within his holy place. He stood in the cold night air on the upper step without it, his face turned towards Elfland. He had on his sacred robe with its border of purple, and the emblem of gold round his neck. But the door of his holy place was shut, and his back was towards it. They wondered to see him stand thus, and as they wondered the Freer began to intone, clear in the evening, with his eyes away to the east, where already a few of the earliest stars were showing. With his head held high, he spoke as though his voice might pass over the frontier of twilight, and be heard by the people of Elfland. Cursed be all wandering things, he said, whose place is not upon earth. Cursed be all lights that dwell in fens and in marish places. Their homes are in deeps of the marshes. Let them by no means stir from there until the last day. Let them abide in their place and there await damnation. Cursed be gnomes, trolls, elves and goblins on land, and all sprites of the water. And fawns be accursed and such as follow Pan, and all that dwell on the heath being other than beasts or men. Cursed be fairies and all tales told of them, and whatever enchants the meadows before the sun is up, and all fables of doubtful authority, and the legends that men hand down from unhallowed times. Cursed be brooms that leave their place by the hearth, cursed be witches and all manner of witcheries. Cursed be toadstool rings and whatever dances within them, and all strange lights, strange songs, strange shadows or rumours that hint of them, and all doubtful things of the dusk, and the things that ill-instructed children fear, and old wives' tales and things done o midsummer nights. All these be accursed with all that leaneth toward Elfland and all that cometh thence. Never a lane of that village, never a barn, but a will-o'-the-wisp was dancing nimbly above it. The night was gilded with them. But as the good freer spoke, they backed away from his curses, floating further off as though a light wind blew them, and danced again after drifting a little way. This they did both before and behind him, and upon either hand, as he stood there upon the steps of his holy place, so that there was a circle of darkness all round him, and beyond that circle shone the lights of the marshes and Elfland. And within the dark circle, in which the freer stood making his curses, were no unhallowed things, nor were there strangenesses such as come of night, nor whispers from unknown voices, nor sounds of any music blowing here from no haunts of men. But all was orderly and seemly there, and no mysteries troubled the quiet, except such as have been justly allowed to man. And beyond that circle whence so much was beaten back by the bright vehemence of the good man's curses, the willow the wisps rioted, and many a strangeness that poured in that night from Elfland, and goblins held high holiday. For word was gone forth in Elfland, that pleasant folk had now their dwelling in Earl, and many a thing of fable, many a mon, stir of myth, had crept through that border of twilight, and had come into Earl to see. And the light and false but friendly will-o'-the-wisps danced in the haunted air, and made them welcome. And not only the trolls and the will-o'-the-wisps had lured these folk from their fabled land through the seldom-traversed border, but the longings and thoughts of Orion, which by half his lineage were akin to the things of myth and of one race with the monsters of Elfland, were calling to them now. Ever since that day by the frontier, when he had hovered between Earth and Elfland, he had yearned more and more for his mother. And now, whether he willed it or no, his elfin thoughts were calling their kin that dwelt in the elvish fells. And at that hour, when the sound of the horns blew through the frontier of twilight, 
they had come tumbling after it. For elfin thoughts are as much akin to the creatures that dwell in Elfland as goblins are to trolls. Within the calm and the dark of the good man's curses, the twelve old men stood silent, listening to every word. And the words seemed good to them, and soothing and right, for they were over-wary of magic. But beyond the circle of darkness, amidst the glare of the will-o'-the-wisps with which all the night flickered, amidst goblin laughter and the unbridled mirth of the trolls, where old legends seemed alive, and the fearfullest fables true, amongst all manner of mysteries, queer sounds, queer shapes, and queer shadows, Orion passed with his hounds eastwards towards Elfland. 